Um, how do you manage conflicts and disagreements in your marriage? Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> you walk away temporarily though. Because sometimes some people do not know how to talk. And some people just... <laughs> you could easily say some things that you can never take back. Hey loves and welcome back again to the channel. It's good to have you on here. If it's your first time, hi, welcome. My name is Kilichi Mbemana and yeah, if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Today is going to be a Q&A session type of video and we're going to be just interacting. I want to touch on things relating to like marriage relationships but also youtube growth and career growth as well so i'm going to be answering some questions and like i said in my previous in my previous q a video i was kind of considering doing this on a weekly basis because i feel like this one is a more this type of content is quite like it's very organic so with this one it's easy going it's relaxing so you can grab yourself a cup of tea juice wine whatever it is to make you feel more comfortable and let's get right into this video so i have something sweet for the video okay so my first question is what advice would you give to newlyweds to help build a strong and lasting marriage <laughs> for anyone who is about to get married or who just recently got married um i think the best advice i would give would be someone actually gave me this advice and that would be for at least the first year of your marriage try as much as possible to limit the people you let into your home and i'm that includes your family and friends right uh this is so important because that first year or two years is usually the most delicate and fragile and that's why you see that a lot of people break up months after they've gotten married uh, days after they've gotten married right if you can get past through that first year you are golden mind you it's between you your husband or you your wife and god everyone else is an outsider in the way that the union works right and because of the way our culture is a lot of family members or friends feel entitled most of the times the best thing you can do to give your marriage a good surviving chance is to try as much as possible to ethically politely um limit the number of people you let into that space and i say this well because that first year is all about you your husband and god you guys need to work on building yourself building your marriage building everything that revolves around you so from your communication your intimacy trust me if you feel like you knew your husband or your boyfriend or your significant other your partner before marriage once you cross that like boundary once you cross over into a wife a husband everything changes like the book of the person's realness kind of starts opening right and you're like oh i didn't know this oh i didn't you just start discovering things about you know your partner and, and you can never really know someone 100 percent completely so yeah it's gonna be a journey for you guys the best thing you can do is to try and work through all the goods and all the bads by yourselves, within yourselves, within your home, without having external people coming and having their inputs. Because like I said, a lot of, especially like in the African culture, a lot of family members might feel entitled to kind of, I don't wanna say control you, but give you advice that may not, or may be solicited, right? <laughs> Unsolicited advice that, you know, may be good for them, but may not necessarily be good for you and your newly wedded um, partner, right? So that's something I would advise you. Somebody gave me this advice and I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that was definitely a good one. And you know, sometimes people, people are people. Humans are humans. Humans will always have conflicts, whether it's small conflict or a big conflict. And it just takes something small 
to start building up into something big. It might be something as little as observing how, oh, why is your wife behaving like this? Oh, why is your husband talking to you like that? Oh, what? maybe it's something that's normal for you guys, but for someone else, it's it's totally different. Oh, why do you guys go out, you know, so often? But it works for you. It doesn't really necessarily mean that it will work for someone else. So yeah, um, use that one year to build yourself, build your relationship, build your home, build your marriage, with yourselves and yeah that's the best advice i would give anyone you know and also talk as much as possible communication is key people have different ways of communicating right i'm a verbal person my husband is more of a reading person understanding that is the beginning of like ease <laughs> right so you need to understand how your partner communicates but communication is key don't hold things in don't let, no matter how small or simple it is don't let it slide you just talk about it and let the other person know what's going on in your head because the more you keep it building up in your head the more that little thing turns into something big it kind of like snowballs you keep one thing and then you keep another thing and then you keep another thing before you know that little thing that seems so little now becomes like a big issue and you know it could lead to something very drastic but we don't want that but that's something i would definitely advise you to do keep your home very intimate and personal and build that right any other thing that comes within let it go okay so we are moving on to i find these conversations to be very um therapeutic for me i don't know why yeah so the next question goes um how do you manage conflicts and disagreements in your marriage ooh, 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 ooh. you walk away temporarily though um i feel like sometimes when you're having conflict and disagreement if you guys don't have a means of communicating if you've not established a healthy communication pattern with, with between you and your partner the best advice i can give you is to let it die let the issue die temporarily right and then like just take a breather right then come back to that same issue and work through it because most times i see that when you are having that conflict or that disagreement at that time if you guys don't have a healthy way of communicating you could easily say some things that you can never take back because you're heated you're angry there's conflicts one person feels like they are not being heard the other person wants to talk and also feels like they're not being heard you guys are making noise you're just saying things but you're not really communicating right that's why i said if you've not established a healthy way of communicating with your partner during conflicts right i'm specifically saying it's during conflict because it's easy to communicate when you guys are happy you're excited you're in a good mood you're living your life it's easier to communicate then but when you're having conflict and disagreement it's it's a totally different world entirely because each party has their own opinions and views and what they want to say at that time and most times each each person each individual wants to be heard so badly and if you've not established a healthy way of communicating through that phase um you guys will just end up like clashing and clashing and clashing and clashing and when it's clashing and clashing both parties both um, partners feel like i'm not you're not listening to me you're not hearing me you're not i'm not you're not saying the right things and before you know it it starts leading to something that cannot be taken back so yeah that's why i said sometimes if you've not if you've not established it leave it it's just say, okay it's okay it's all right it's all right let it die down continue your life and as time passes you kind of eases a little bit right the it's not as heated as it might be then come back to the issue and be like oh you know what you did was wrong oh, but you should have done this this way you should have done that that way you should have done like you get what i'm saying i don't know if i'm making sense but yeah because it's better to do it that way than to go all ham and then you guys are like talking and then talking and you know you could get frustrated and when you're frustrated and you're angry things can happen things could be said so that's definitely something i would advise you to do is to create a healthy communication pattern that you guys can establish that you, and you can use 
to communicate through conflicts and disagreement, right? What works for you might not work for me, and what works for me might not work for you. Okay, so for a minute there, I thought my life was <laughs> going to go a little bit as planned, but life happens, and my baby woke up before she was supposed to wake up, so I can't stop filming this video, so we're gonna continue with this video regardless of <laughs> that. So what else do I want to say? Let's read another one. How do you balance individual goals and ambitions with the goals of your marriage? Um, I feel like when it comes to marriage, right? We're individuals, right? But at the end of the day, we're a team. And that's the most important part. The team for me is just as important as the individual, right? Um, something that we always do or that i would advise to do is to i mean your partner has to have your back <laughs> see eh? this is so key in building yourself and your career as a person when you're with someone that person you're with has to believe in you maybe more than you believe in yourself right has to see the potential of every single thing you say right and has to see the end result so for me the way i balance it is that i'm pretty much like a we're pretty much like a team right um he has his strengths i have my strengths i have my goals he has his goals but sometimes you kind of find a mutual ground right i have these this is what i want to achieve like right now i have some goals that i want to achieve for christmas like i have some projects that i want to work on and he already knows about it like we're already planning like okay we're gonna hire this we're gonna get this we're gonna get this team we're gonna get this person we're gonna use this venue he has, he has one to start that venue for me to use and um, we're gonna use this location i'm gonna do this to create this content to do this do you get what i'm saying so i that's my goal but because we're a team we're kind of find a way to help ourselves out and that is so important right so that way we can create like a balance that is healthy let's find a way to create a balance that is healthy for everyone within that union and that is so important to so understand that you're a team and Kayla is part of our team Carsing is part of our team my husband is part of our team so we have to figure out a way that every member benefits or puts in something when it comes to one person so if Kayla needs help with something I can't give it to her her dad has to give it to her or her brother has to give it i don't know that makes sense but we're all a team member we all have to have a little bit of input in whatever it is even if it's as little as you know drinking water or helping hold the cup you know if you can't hold the cup i'm gonna help you hold the cup do you get what i'm saying right or die better for worse till death do us part so you gotta you gotta be behind me right so um that's how i balance my goals um we just help ourselves to be honest with you and that one that one is from one angle and from a from an individual angle is i have a i have priorities i have a way i have a mentally we all have priorities we know what's most important sorry baby we know what's most important to us um having that in mind work with that and don't stop right whatever you're doing you need to do it with a hundred and ten percent and give it your best shot okay hey this one is a funny one funny thing is i actually created a video how do you navigate the challenges of long distance relationship within a marriage ho, ho, ho. i think i did a video some days back but it's not going to be live yet i think this one might go up before that one but i kind of talked about long distance marriage and long distance relationship because i've experienced both and we'll talk more on that in depth and my husband kind of gave his input on that as well so yeah um i think one thing about long distance what kind of separates that is the barrier with that has to do with physical presence and communication right and now with the internet i mean it's not physical presence but it's more or less like virtual presence so something that we try to do is communication right this is so important i cannot stress how important communication is when you are in a relationship in a partnership in an agreement with someone you always want to check in you know share your messages share how you feel 
you know celebrate i think that's how we've been able to kind of like survive long distance what were some of the biggest obstacles you faced when starting your youtube journey and how did you overcome them so obstacles and overcoming the obstacles wow i feel what i think i've said this before one of the biggest obstacles i faced back then over seven years ago it wasn't about filming gear it wasn't about oh camera lighting settings blah 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 it was more of identity right i struggled with kind of knowing who i was and owning that and when i say knowing who i was i meant like in the way that i represented my true self the way i spoke the way i looked the way i just was online right and even though i feel like when i started off youtube i was like i was still myself but i feel like at the same time i was trying too hard <laughs> because i i feel like i was trying to hard to i want to i don't want to say be who i i wasn't i was trying to hard to fit the usual youtube characteristics or youtubers characteristics and that is loud you know yeah i don't know what, i don't know what word i what, what how i want to describe it but i was having my biggest um struggle was with identity right you know i i wanted to be accepted and i didn't know if i would be accepted i also didn't know i knew that i wanted to do beauty and hair because i was good at it or i felt like I, I, was, I was actually good at hair too i'm still good at hair content and i felt you know what i might as well share what i'm good at right now i didn't like vlogs because i feel like i was a lot i was really introverted i hardly used to go anywhere and i also felt like my life would be boring and now there are there's a niche of vloggers who just create like introverted style simple at home vlogs and they are always therapeutic so it's not it's not sometimes it's how you convey the message that matters not what you think the message might turn out to be right it's how you convey because most times we're like oh i'm an introvert i don't go out what am i going to vlog about well have you tried it have you tried to you have an idea you want to vlog about your life or you feel like your life is boring have you tried to envision your life in someone else's eyes have you tried to tell your story the best way possible right and with creating content it's all about how you tell your story to be honest with you and also with youtube it's all about how you tell your story that was something to take note of how do you deal with negative comments or criticisms on your videos uh I don't want to i don't know like you guys <laughs> you guys um i have one of the i don't know if i want to say i have one of the best community right in terms of the people that we have attracted so far I, I maybe out of a thousand comments i get one nasty comment and that is so rare on this channel right but when i get uh, one thing i like to do is when i get criticisms about my content I try to see from the perspective of whoever is writing it, right? So if it's related to my personal life, you have no thing, you 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 are not relevant to me. So don't come, okay? Stay where you are. Or if it's really if it's related to my content, maybe you feel like the audio is not good enough, the content that I'm talking about, you know, wasn't well scripted, or you did not learn anything, or it wasn't as detailed as possible, then I take that i take from it and i try to look past the way the message was conveyed because sometimes some people do not know how to talk and some people just talk and type and you know they don't know how to convey the message so most times it's good to just take the message and ignore the way the message was conveyed what are the top recommendations for creating high quality video content and improving video production skills watch my videos that's all i can say watch my videos 
I try as much as possible to be very detailed with my production related content in a way that I share with you guys a lot of tips, a lot of tricks on how you can level up your content creation um, strategies and production and stuff and all that. So do watch my videos. <laughs> I have tons of resources and I will leave them over here. But something I would tell you is you keep practicing, but in as much as you keep practicing, keep learning at the same time. So if you practice with three videos, learn from another video and keep practicing and keep learning right those two things would get you moving upwards right i've come to an end of this video and i hope that this video was entertaining i will see you guys in the next one if you have any questions i will leave a link here so you guys can ask me questions and we can turn this into a weekly series but i hope that this video was helpful i hope that it was entertaining and i'll see you guys in the next one till then make sure you stay fabulous and you stay blessed and i'll see you in the next one my God.